coast to coast, border to border, and around the world. It's time for The Bill Alexander Show. The Bill Alexander Show is a guest-driven program where the topics are diverse and entertaining. Laugh and learn while you listen to one of the best hours of online radio. Now, here's your host, Bill Alexander. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yours truly, William Eric Alexander. All my friends call me Bill, and welcome to this edition of the Bill Alexander Show. Great to have you with us today. Really excited about having this guest because she's been on the program many a time, and she's now officially the voice of the Bill Alexander Show. So now I have something that, that, that connects me to NBC. Not only she does it for NBC, <laughs> she does it for me. Anna, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I just realized that my... Uh... The stove is looking, it's in a little clean me up. I hope everybody's watching the video. They're not listening to the audio, right? They're going to watch the video. Oh, they could do right? both. No, no, no. Watch, watch the video. It. Okay. So whenever, whenever I put it up as a podcast, I'll just stop it and yeah. tell them that you have to go to the video, right? Yeah. Okay. That works yeah. for me. Yeah. So this is the kitchen that was, was done, what, a year and a half ago that... You yeah. had your contractor living with you, some mm -hmm. Russian guy that was working on it? The Lithuanian moved in. Oh, Lithuanian. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we uh, lived together for about nine months. He didn't live here. He lives right down the street. But it felt that way. Looks very nice. I'm. It's Thank big you. enough for um, doing TV shoots? That's right. We designed it to be able to do this. But right now, it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple. I just have the, the laptop going, and, and, and it seems to work. So... Well, it works oh, for me. I'll, so when you, I'll bring, I'll bring things up and say, see, <laughs> I'm having awful flashbacks to 2012 to 2014 when I used yeah, to do used that to at do a radio that. station. What's that? Yeah, we used to do it on a hot plate in a radio it. station. Yeah. yeah, which was oh, very interesting. Oh, it was fun, and a convection yeah. oven that we brought with us. Um, the best part <laughs> is the night he tried to make spaghetti. And it had that foam insulation on the ceiling and the hot steam from the pot was oh. knocking it off. And you saw, it looked like it was snowing on top of us. And then you were inhaling all that popcorn yes. asbestos <laughs> from yes. the ceiling. Yeah, cool. it, it was enjoyable. It really was. Well, so, we'll, we'll see anyhow. how you feel in about eight years when that asbestos oh, kicks in. <laughs> hey, and in seven years, I'll actually be able to retire from my real job. So you're <laughs> right. Probably eight years I'll be laid oh, up so Lord. So what's going on, Anna? We haven't talked in a while. It's been a while. You have a new show? Well, it's the same show, different name. Okay. Well, I'm glad <laughs> to be I'm glad to be the intro voice. So yes. listeners, and you're, you all, and you're also on the wall voice. behind me too. See, you're right there. So, oh, there I am. Did there I sign are. that? I signed yeah. that. Yeah, you signed that. I didn't sign your book though. You didn't sign my book. I'm I'm you feeling get one, really slided down. You get one autograph and then yeah, you know. That, I, do I have to pay extra for the other stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you should be thankful I have you on today. Yesterday, I spoke to Anson Williams. From, I know. Uh, happy days. <laughs> I saw your list of guests and the Anson Williams one jumped out at me. I was like, holy crap, that's amazing. How is Anson <laughs> Williams? I have to go back and listen to that, to that interview. Actually, it was really fun. We really, it was interesting. And he actually answered my questions, especially the one we all wanted to know is what happened to Richie's brother's brother, Chuck? And why did they get rid of him? which was very interesting to hear about that. He, Gary he Marshall didn't test basically, well? Yeah, what well, happened? <laughs> Gary Marshall said no one would miss him, so they put him on a plane and he left. They basically <laughs> just got rid of him, yeah. So, yeah, talk to them, and I, I let's see. Oh, a while back, I spoke to another comedian, a, a, a uh, comedian that I guess would be considered a veteran by the name of Joanne Worley. I don't know if you've ever heard of her before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to her because of the Betty White passing away. Her and Betty White were oh. good friends. So she was talked. she was playing the matron or the warden or somebody in Chicago recently, yes, maybe a few yes. years back. Yeah, yeah. Joanne Worley. So, Wait, so yeah, was she that, from laughing? Yes. Yes. Yes, she was. The, That's the, awesome. She's yeah, a badass. Ask, oh, she's great. And talked to uh, what's it, Bruce Valanche, the uh, comedy oh writer for Bette Midler. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> You got good people on. What are you doing it's here like with a, me? It's like all of a sudden I fell down this rabbit show. I changed the name of the program and now everybody showed up. I guess they finally realized that it's a talk program that we talk to people. I don't know. Yeah. 
So, but uh, so what have you been doing since uh, we we've, we've talked? Well, last time we talked was what? I Probably... told you that I had launched this sauce, right? Well, we've talked about that a couple of we've times. We talked about that. And we talked and about the spices, which I'm still waiting for my phone call to be the spokes spokesperson for the taco spice, but yes, I still haven't the, gotten that yet. The spices should be in. We had to find a new. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Being new to any industry, which I decided, at, you know, at the age of 47, I'm going to launch an entirely new business in the food space. And now a year and a half later, here I am, and I have three flavors of sauces, but the spices, we had to switch manufacturers because they raised the price on us 250%. Oh, wow. And so we had to scramble. We had our formulas all ready to go, all organic, and it's, everything's based on recipes from my books. And uh, all everything's no sugar added, obviously. I'm the no sugars, no grains gal. And um, so it has to be done just a certain way. So that we had to find, and it was amazing how hard it was. We called I don't know, tens of places being like, hey, can you do organic? Can you do this? Can you do that? And we found a great place in Colorado that's going to do it. And we then you have to start over with the formulas. It's a whole thing. Everything takes a long time. So we are about to go into production on those spices and I cannot wait to launch them. And then we're going to start dressings and then we're going to start cheese crisps. Oh, really? That sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, for for my audience out there, Anna is the only person I can t I can text while walking into a big supermarket That's and going right. into the sauces and say, "Hey, look, this is organic." At least they say they are organic. Right. I mean, we carried a conversation on that one day for about ten minutes by, by text. I know <laughs> it. It is interesting because some of them are organic, but then they, if you yeah. read the ingredients, which I always say, read the ingredients is more important than the nutritional panel because the nutritional panel you can fudge stuff, mm -hmm. but the ingredients are what's actually in that bottle of sauce. And a lot of them say organic, but then they have sugar or cane syrup right. or, or molasses or something weird. You're like, what? And, um, or they're not organic and sugar. So I wanted to do organic with no sugar added, although we might be switching our tomato supplier to an Italian tomato supplier, which is automatically organic because they don't, in, in, in Europe, they don't spray everything with stuff. Right. Like they're and not into it. Like we're like, let's spray it. We're well, the last time you and I talked, you said that you were looking into doing that, mm -hmm. that you said that that was a possibility. So, so what beverage are you drinking today? I'm drinking black coffee. I have, I have a little Perrier. Oh, Perrier. That's it's a no regular fun. Perrier. That's no, no fun. It's, you, it, you kind of thought for a second it might be a Heineken. Well, I thought. It's not. Is she, is she drinking a tiny Heineken? A tiny <laughs> A tiny Heine. No. A tiny Heine? No, she's not. She's boring and she's drinking a Perrier. It well, is only 1.30 in the afternoon. I got here. my handle with me, so. I'm okay, nice. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew you Absolutely. were going to be here, so I had to have something in my coffee. So, um, so I'm going to make a chicken parm today while we're talking. It actually sounds pretty good. And of course, it is good. Here, here where I am on the East Coast, it is what about 4 40 20 minutes in front of the hour of five o'clock so it is oh, almost you're gonna dinner be, time you're gonna be really hungry for dinner when i'm done with this so i'm gonna tell you chicken parm is one of those things by the way i've been celiac for 20 years so i can't yes. have gluten and it's very rare that you'll find a restaurant that you can walk into and they have just a gluten-free chicken parm it doesn't exist right there's okay. one restaurant in new york city that does it and i eat it there every time i go to new york city but so you're gonna have to make it at home if you have to have gluten free and of course i take it one step further to be uh low carb so i'm using almond flour you can also use uh crushed up pork rinds you can use mm -hmm. people use um uh parmesan cheese you could grate parmesan cheese with the almond flour and it's such a simple dish to make especially when you have a jar of amazing sauce that tastes like you've made it homemade this is my recipe as well i mean well, everything course. is scaled up of course everything is scaled up for what i make Mm -hmm. And, and like I told you before, it took convincing me because I was like, doesn't everybody make their sauce from scratch? Right. No one and has time. Like, no one has time. And now that we have been doing this, I have not made it from scratch the moment I got my hands on this because it's so good that right. I'm like, oh, I don't need to make it from scratch. I'm high on my own supply. So well, um, that's good. At least, at least, you yeah. know, you will always have one customer. Yeah, exactly. I, so basically all you're going to do is take your chicken breasts season the crap out of them i think i'm gonna hammer these a little thinner though i like a i like a thinner right chicken parm it's up to you your own decision so, so what do you season yours with? It's hammered up. um i'm gonna season mine with salt and pepper Hold okay on, here we go. i'm gonna season mine with salt and pepper garlic powder and onion powder those are always my kind of go-to 
flavor starters for stuff. In fact, let me get the let me get the correct the meat cutting board. Where is it? Just, Where is just it? let everybody Where know. Is it? Reynolds Cut Right is not sponsoring this program. I would no. like it if they did, but I'm just letting you know that now. Anyone from Reynolds listening? <laughs> I, I, got, I, I I actually three had to go nice... buy that the other day, which is kind of oh, funny. Yeah. So, as I, got I couldn't three pretty find nice it... boneless, skinless breasts here. Go ahead, sorry. So, okay, this is a great point. So, chicken prices, they are saying, are going up because I guess there has been some type of Doesn't virus that is what? actually um, attacking the chicken. Chickens in the Midwest, and they're talking about the prices going up. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I don't either, um, and that, because our main like meal in the house everything is, is going to go up. Do you well, feel like in the news they're like every anything that you want to buy, we're just going to report it as going up, just so yes. like it's that's just what's well, happening right now. I got a message. I got a reminder on Facebook today, and this is gonna it, was be loud. Two, it was from that's okay from 2011, and basically what I said was there was rumors that gas prices were going to go up to four to five dollars a gallon by Memorial Day. Well. 11 years now later, tanks, guess what's happening? Now it's saying $7 an hour by like, I mean, $7 yeah. a gallon by like next week. What are you paying right now? Um, I have an electric car, but I saw the gas prices recently and they were close to $5 a gallon wow. up here. And I'm, I'm in, I'm in an area of California where it's more expensive. Yes. We're only paying oh, three sixty nine dollars right now. See, that's, Remember when gas was like 80 cents a gallon? Yes, I do. Remember you I could remember put $5 that. of gas in your car and you could get somewhere with it? <laughs> well, I remember when I was a kid and I learned how to drive and my dad said, here, go take some money and go get gas. He gave me money. And I figured right. how much I could actually put in the car to make it look like I filled it to half a tank. And then I could use the rest of the money to go buy something else. You can't and do that anymore. And that was good old fashioned, you know, intuitive no what's that for, word in, ingenuity ingenuity were, that's right you were ingenuitous thank you You're that's, welcome. That's, that's a word like cookbooker i guess um, i'm a cookbooker so, so i'm just okay. using the wax paper to keep this from splattering everywhere right of course um so how how there we go how, how much do each one of those chicken breasts weigh i, I got about because i'm just feeding my husband and myself I just got three chicken breasts, two, usually two chicken breasts are about a pound. So okay. you need to get a couple pounds if you want, you know, if you're family of four. Um, and now we're gonna, the reason you don't wanna hammer them too hard is you don't want them to get like, to right. fall apart. But uh, what I'm gonna do is season these guys. They're not a sponsor, but I love Redmond Real Salt. Cause people always ask me, what, what kind of salt do you buy? And Redmond Real Salt is from uh, Utah and I like them. So what makes, that suspe good. what makes that different than, say, normal Morton salt? Because it's not iodized. It's the sea salt, but it's from America. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's American. It's American, American sea salt. American sea salt. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, I am kind of salting the tarnation out of this. You could also just lightly season this and put some more, uh, put a lot of seasoning in your coating. But I'm seasoning the bird itself. Okay. And I'm going to, you know what, actually, here's what I'm going to do, Bill. I'm going to season gonna salt do? and pepper here, and I'm going to put garlic powder and onion powder in this mixture. Oh, wow. You're being fancy That's now. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. And you can't stop me. You can't I'm stop not going me. to. Good. Um, so you made, a comment, you made a comment earlier about using the almond flour or yeah. um, using pork rinds. Now, I've done yeah. pork rinds on chicken mm -hmm. breast, but the problem is I can't mm -hmm. get them to stay on, and they get soggy. Let's, you're, let's talk about that. I am. That's Let's why I asked. Let's talk about that because there's a couple of ways to do it. If you want a really thick coating, you could take these right here and just lightly dust them um, in in your pork rinds, and then dredge them in the egg wash, and then really get them in the pork rinds again. Okay. Thick coating, and the egg will help it stay on. I usually do it the lazy way, which is not doing the egg wash. And that's it's what up I do. To you, yeah, yeah. It, you just press it. <laughs> you'll yeah, see you'll yeah. see you have to do, you have to just press it in so let me get so my garlic in your, powder and my onion powder in your skillet what type of oil are you going to use olive oil I always use olive oil okay um unless i'm making something that 
Oh, I should have got the bigger pan. Let's go ahead and start this though. We can do it in stages. I pretty much pre-cook the uh, chicken on the stove and then put it in the oven just to kind of finish everything with the cheese and the sauce and make it nice and bubbly. You could, if you oh, wanted to do idea. the whole thing in the oven, you can do that. Right. This is just kind of like faster. I like to get dinner on the table quickly because when I'm not recipe writing, uh, I still eat the same way, but just a much simpler version. And I find right. this dish to be very simple. And people really, I'm putting about half teaspoon of each garlic powder and onion powder in this thing. And then I'm gonna whisk it up. And if you don't have a baby whisk, you gotta get a baby whisk. Baby whisk, actually, I should say, there's like a junior whisk, you know? And then there's okay. like the baby a baby whisk. whisk. Gotcha. Both of these I use every single day. Actually, so I'm gonna do the junior whisk here. So you wanna get those so lumps you, out and get it kind of. You and I have talked about this before, why you don't have your own program on one of the cable networks. <laughs> and I think you should, because I think you can do it Thank humorously. You. I mean, everybody else has one. Why shouldn't Anna? And right. yesterday, was it yesterday? No, it was last week. I had to come home early for something, and I watched Rachel Ray. Yes. She's not in a studio anymore. She's cooking She's from at home. home. Yeah, everybody's cooking Your from quality home. of what you're doing is so much better than what she's doing. Well, Just picture-wise. Yeah. Listen, she has a she has a schedule to attend to. By the way, do you see? It's pretty mm -hmm. well coat. It's pretty well coated. And it is. I, I mean, I'm I impressed. It in there. Now, almond so flour will burn pretty easily. So, I'm so gonna that's almond these. flour and Parmesan, uh, or is it just almond flour? I just did almond flour, garlic powder, and onion powder. Okay. But I seasoned the salt and pepper. I mean, the chicken breast with salt and pepper really, really well. I'm gonna cut one of these. Is so big. I'm going to cut, just make like little right. tenders with it. This is also to a dish that like, it doesn't have to be really pretty. You don't have to like make sure that like, oh, I destroyed the, the, the cohesiveness of the look. doesn't matter. You're throwing, yeah. it's a casserole. You're just throwing yeah, you're it into it. a pan. Yeah. And you're going to eat it. And the wow factor is the melted cheese on it, which also so, makes it really hard to photograph. Oh, really? Do you, do you see how I'm just like pressing it in Oh there? yeah, I see how, and, then I'm gonna and it's going on extra. really nice too. Yeah. And you're not doing so an we'll egg wash. Those. It's just basically no. the chicken itself. No. Yeah. Let me wash my hands and we'll do the second round when that's done. So, okay. So my question is you're making the chicken parm. Mm -hmm. What would you make as a side dish? Uh, I would probably honestly just make a green salad. I, I make a green salad with my basic balsamic or my Italian dressing, which is killer. And that's on my Pinterest and on my website and on my sub stack. That Italian dressing gets made quite a bit. Um, it's, it's more like a traditional, like, wishbone Italian dressing, but without yeah. the added crap in it, you know? Um, also, too, you might need to add more oil in the pan because this stuff kind of eats the oil. So okay. I just add a little more in as I go. Don't be afraid of olive oil. It's, it's very good for you. Well, I know it's Popeye was wonderful wasn't, to cook so. in. <laughs> I'm gonna let that yeah. go for a little while. You I know still haven't found a sweet spot with the stove. It's either like nine million Kelvin hot or off. Like that's just. Do you know? Do you know where they get the extra virgin olive oil from? <laughs> where? Ugly olives. <laughs> with the zingers. I didn't say they were good. <laughs> You're the comedian, <laughs> not me. Listen, I, I'm going to steal that joke and, yeah, and I'm bury sure you're it. Not. I'm take sure it all you're back not. and shoot it and bury it. <laughs> so have you been doing any stand-up recently? I have not. I've done some Zoom shows uh, with my husband. We're still, you know, doing that from time to time. But really, I, I, we're still kind of at home. And it's kind of nice. I'm going to be at KetoCon in July. And, I'm, and we're doing the Fancy Food Show, which is a trade show in New York City in june so th those will be my big forays i feel very i had covid back in january so i feel right, very brazen that, yeah. right now yeah i'm like yeah. i had it i'm ready to go <laughs> and i was vax boosted right and so now i'm just like you know so when you go to, to to keto con do you dress up in costumes or how does this work <laughs> no I, okay. I dress up like a pork rind no <laughs> Is Vinny going to yeah. be there too? Yes, he's going to be there too. It's in Austin in, in July. It's going to be fun. I'm excited for that. 
I'm still waiting for you to come back to Pittsburgh. I'm, I need to do that too. I got to get back with the lady at Crete. I'm supposed to go there. I'm supposed to go to Barnes and Noble. Remember, it all got canceled. I know. It got. I was ready to meet you finally in person. Oh, I know. And, you were and supposed to take bourbon. me to dinner, if I remember correctly. Oh, uh, wait. Hold on. What? <laughs> <laughs> I owe everyone dinner. Uh huh. I want somebody so, to make me dinner. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you a question. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you're working. Yeah, this you're, is looking you're, looking good. It looks really good. So you're yeah. using you're using flour and you have all this, and yet you still Almond decide flour. to wear black. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I did not wear an apron. I noticed that. That's why I said that. Did you realize that every nope. <laughs> nope. So has like your daughter, highlighting the food. Has your daughter graduated yet? Yes. I have a, I, I put one out into the world. You're and welcome. What she, and what's she doing now? She's in New York City. She's uh, working as a painter. She's working for other painters. Uh, she just got a studio. I'm super proud of her. And, That's you know, awesome. she's making it work. She's a, you know, you're the, you're the parent of an artist. So do you think because of COVID, we're looking at art differently than we did before and performing art? I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope people would miss it you know? Well, you and, and me both. My son is uh, graduating with his degree in this coming May, and he just did auditions for one of the major cruise lines. And good. those are coming of, back. And out of the large group, which I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm going to tell you anyhow, because I just feel the need to brag. Out of all the guy, out of all the people that they 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 um, auditioned, they brought back three guys and six girls. My son was one of the three guys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, That's a uh, good feeling. So the fingers are crossed that he gets it. When he told me what he was going to make a week, I told him that I could I could quit my job and just carry his luggage because <laughs> it's those my cruise ships, <laughs> those cruise ships do well. See, I already I was trying to show you a thing and then already a little a flake of the almond right. flour came up you do have to kind of be gentle i'm putting those in let me put a little so more how, olive oil in here let me do the so second how long round it, should it take to to fry one of those up i mean how long were we doing that like two to three minutes per side About maybe that, a little yeah. less it's still pink in the middle it's not done but it's partially done it's it's par par fried i don't know okay. um but we want to do i we, because we're going to finish the oven by the way when you were talking i i preheated the oven to 350 and I just reposted this with a fresh link at my site. So it's the first recipe on my site. So if your audience wants to print this recipe or watch the video, uh, like a shorter <laughs> you have to the version sit, of the video, you have to sit through me and Bill talking. What's wrong with that? I don't know. <laughs> don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> don't answer that. If you do get your hands dirty. Yes, so that's awesome. That. So he has the call back, and then what happens? He's got to like do more. We're, we're just we're wait we're waiting for the phone call. So we'll see what happens. Now, do they do do they like have them rehearse with like a repertoire of plays? And like, I believe they... I believe so. Yeah, and got that it. he he uh, does that. But but I since I've been talking to the all these actors and actresses and comedians over the last two mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. I've decided that I'm going to be an extra. So I just threw my hat okay. in the ring to Great. the new Tom Hanks movie that is going to be filmed in Pittsburgh. Amazing. And if I don't get it, hopefully my car will get a part in the film because it's a 73 Volkswagen Beetle and they're looking for cars of that era because that's when the movie's taking place. So fingers crossed. If I don't make it, my car will make it. We'll see what happens. Listen, one time my dog got an audition and it was the best day of my life. Like, I was like, please book my dog. I want my dog to honestly be famous. Like, who doesn't want their dog to be famous? We all love You're our right. dogs, right? They well, didn't care. They were like, next. I was like, no, she's perfect. Like, I took it more personally than any audition I'd ever been on. Well, I, I just want to be able to have a listing international uh, movie database. That's all I want. The, that's the brass ring, Bill. Because the I've IMDb. seen, I've, I've talked to a few actors and actresses recently that how they got their listing is beyond on. me. <laughs> but you didn't hear me say that <laughs> so. um it's a cruise ship industry is interesting because uh i know a lot of actors who've done improv on cruises right and they, they've made a ton of money just doing the improv show and 
And a friend of mine told me that when somebody dies on the cruise ship, they, they would know because they would serve all the passengers ice cream. It's ice cream day because they'd had to empty out the uh, freezer. Freezer. <laughs> That's a put wonderful the dead, thought. To put the dead person. <laughs> so next time you're on a cruise, folks. If someone dies, you're getting ice if, cream. If everybody in the whole ship just got like, hey, we're giving out ice cream. Don't want this That's to go funny. to waste. <laughs> you know what happened. Someone passed away. Um, so someone have you gone did. out and seen any live performances recently? No. Or are you I, just staying I, home? I, I'm staying home. I, I, I am supposed to go on Saturday to, again, I had the COVID about a month and a half ago or a month right. ago. So I am ready to go out into the world. Um, I'm supposed to go to a wine tasting festival thing on Saturday, which is indoors. And I'm like, bring it on. <laughs> I am ready to go indoors with other humans without masks. I probably, if I didn't have it, honestly, I'd be a little freaked out. I'll, I'll be honest. Right. I'm, I'm still not quite. I know y'all in Pennsylvania are way ahead. You've had the masks off for a while. and Which is amazing that Pennsylvania is finally ahead of California for something. Um, not I mean, that is it is for the, the right reasons? I don't know, but hey. <laughs> um, I went to I went to see the monkeys, uh, Mickey Dolan, oh my God, and Peter so Tork in November. And we were able to go in without masks. We just had to show vaccination cards at the door. Interesting. Which was interesting. And then a month later, Mike Nesmith passed away. So what's that telling you? <laughs> Did he pass away of COVID? No, he, he oh, okay. age caught up with him is what it is. Yeah. And then my, my son was in the, uh, in the musical Elf. He played Buddy the Elf. And awesome. we had to wear masks through that whole thing. So again, it depends on where you're at and what you're doing. I've got to say flying on the plane with a mask across the country was a huge pain in the ass. But we were in New York right before Omicron hit. And I was thinking yeah. to myself, this seems it's crazy everyone's on top it's like new york nothing had ever happened and i was like right. this is everyone's right on top of each other and then about uh 10 days later my daughter called and said my two of my professors have it my roommate has it and her friend had it and then she got it her boyfriend like everybody got it, omicron and then we managed to not get it from her when she came home and then got it from a, a friend here <laughs> <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving uh, <laughs> over it i'm over it i'm so, i am and i'm not i don't mean to trivialize or minimalize anything i know people have been going through the, the the ringer with it and i think the rest of us are like we have to figure out a way to live our lives right and, and i, I agree much. with you with that because one of the first times we talked was right before it hit and right. then we've talked in the middle of it a couple of times since then Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting, and I'm sure if you'd go back and, and listen and watch the programs that we did, the tone has changed, because oh, yeah. I think you're right. I think we need to get on, we need to move on, and find a way to do it, and I agree with that. We are, we are fatigued. Yes. Um, I turned the heat off, because as you can see, it's kind of starting, these guys are it's trying to It's caramelizing, yes. Yeah, so. I know those big words. So it's caramel, it's caramelizing. Maze Bell. It's caramel. So how so how often do you produce videos um for your YouTube channel? I well I try to do YouTube videos and those are the more edited finished ones, so those right. don't come up as often. I do every Tuesday at 2 30 Pacific, I do an Instagram live and I'll do like uh you know, here's soft boiled eggs 101, homemade salad dressing 101. I'll do a lot of 101s, I'll do a lot of um here's how people have been wondering how you make a spaghetti squash because it seems to a lot oh, of people are using spaghetti, spaghetti squash and yeah so i'll say here's here's the technique and so i show yeah. a lot of technique and wind up with a dish but uh sometimes i'll invent like i invented the chitza which is have you heard of the chaffle you know the chaffle no i have thing? not heard of the chaffle okay so the chaffle is a thing and it's basically cheese and eggs and then i throw in either almond flour or pork rinds okay. and you put it in the waffle iron and it's a cheese waffle. It's a chaffle, right? Oh, that sounds and wonderful. It's a, it is good. It's very savory. It's great if you like, you can build it with like a BLT or a Reuben. Right. You can, you know, it gives you that sandwich feeling, right? Right. And so I was like, what if we did it with mozzarella and put, I, I chopped up the pepperoni in it and the olives in it. And basically it's like a, it's a chizza. It's a chaffle pizza. <laughs> and then dip, and then I cut it and dip it in the sauce. And it's, it's amazing. It makes you feel like you're having a pizza without ordering Domino's. So Sorry, where's Domino. the recipe at for this? 
That's at uh, that's at my Substack. I have okay. a Substack too. Yeah. Annabacino.substack.com. Yeah, that's where I post all my thing, new recipes. The Substack thing I can't figure out. It's just I'm. You just know what it is? It. You know what it is? Here's what's happened over the years. The okay, I put we have chicken in a pan. Yes. Next step, it's it's mostly cooked, but not all the way cooked chicken. So don't eat it at this point. Jar of sauce. Boom. And boom, liberally boom. pour it over top, right? I'm gonna do the whole thing. Yeah. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll leave a little bit. So which marinara are you using? I'm using the OG marinara. I it also is great with the puttanesca and the pink crema. The puttanesca has got the olives, the uh, this is right. my favorite flavor, the puttanesca. The olives, the onions, the capers, the oregano added to it. And a little pepper flakes. So it's a little warm, but not spicy. I'm coming out with a spicy in, in about a month or two. And then the pink crema has the dairy in it. And that's just like added heavy cream and um, Parmesan. It's delicious. Oh, my God. Um, what was I saying, though, before that with the, oh, the videos? Crap. What was I saying? What did I say? I don't know. Um, oh, God damn. <laughs> we'll get there. We got plenty of time. I'm just doing pre-grated mozzarella. You can do fresh balls of mozzarella. Right. You slice and up it. and cut it. Um, this is just what I had in the house. I also have Parmesan. If for a true chicken parm, you could put Parmesan on there, but I usually just use mozzarella. Uh, I like, oh, the sub stack. I know what we're talking about. Here's what happened. Yeah. I, I do want to explain this because a lot of people are doing a sub stack now. And somebody told me two years ago to sign up for one and I didn't. And I wish I did. Because I signed why. up for one because you did. And I don't so, know okay, good. It. Yeah, and I have no clue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in the oven. So while we're finishing coffee, that can complete cooking. Even now, though how long does it go wait. in the oven for? Eh, 15 minutes. Okay. So it'll finish at 350. It'll finish, or 400 if you want to do it. But I, I think it's cooked enough around the outside that I don't need to do it too high. So Substack, here's what's happened. When we're trying to get the word out about the things that we're creating, right? Right. So we're, we're trying to tell the people. So we put, we make posts on Twitter. We make posts on Instagram and social media and Facebook, right? We have email lists. So I'll email my list like, Hey, this interview came out with Bill. I think y'all should check it out. Or right. I have a new recipe, or I'm going to appear at this thing, or I'm doing a show at, in Chicago or whatever. And what has happened over the years is that the algorithms of all of these things, including the email list has been sending things to spam or people don't see the algorithm. And when I really started to notice it happening, I did a limited edition pumpkin marinara this past fall. And that. it was delicious and a huge hit. And then it sold out because I said, I'm not going to, I didn't know how it was going to do. So I said, we're going to pre-sell the whole thing. And if you guys don't order it, you don't get it. Well, I thought being the non-sales person that I am, I feel like I'm just saying it again and again and again and again and again. I feel like I'm being too repetitive. I feel like I'm being annoyingly repetitive. Get your pumpkin marinara, get your pumpkin marinara. And then people were like, I never saw this. I didn't know. I'm on your email list. I follow you on Twitter. I follow you on Instagram. I, I'm in your Facebook group. And I didn't see it. And I was like, really? Because I literally only talked about that for like six weeks. <laughs> so right. what's going on? And I personally am getting really frustrated with that because I can't communicate information to people and people miss things. So Substack, for whatever reason, whatever deal they made with the devil, the Substack <laughs> emails will go into people's email boxes, whether they read the emails, another thing. But if you are legit interested in seeing what I have to say, Substack is the best way to get Nail it. It. Um, it has open rates of like 80%. Whereas really? like, okay. whereas like, you know, MailChimp or Drip or whatever, yeah. you know, anywhere. That stuff is somewhere, it could be anywhere from 12 to, you're lucky if you get like 25% open rate. So that's kind of what I thought. So I was like, you know what, but, but, but the ironic thing being, it's almost like a uh, blogging platform, what blogging used to be. It's just a simple mm -hmm. blogging platform that then gets emailed to people's newsletters. Right. And then you can put a paywall on it. So, so I was, I was, I was uh, looking um, before, before we started talking today, what prompted me to reach out to you again? And it was due to a post that you put out in December about sausage balls and cream yeah. sauce. <laughs> so which, sausage cheddar balls. Yes. Which there was no cream think, sauce that went with those. Okay. It wasn't? No. Are you sure? Sausage, sausage cheddar balls on the sub It says sausage balls and sauce. I'm looking at the email right here. But not cream sauce. Okay. <laughs> 
it's a sausage cheddar balls for an appetizer on Christmas Eve. Yes. <laughs> and I'm reading it going, why am I thinking of the Saturday Night Live routine of the sweaty, sweaty balls? balls? I would hope that, you would. And that, <laughs> well, I wouldn't anyhow. But that was my <laughs> thought when I read it. I'm going, is she trying to capitalize on that? I mean, if she is, that's fantastic. But I wonder how many other people thought about it the same way I did. I'm sure that they did. But I will tell you this much. Yeah. The place where I've had the most sausage cheddar balls on Christmas Eve has been Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Y'all like your sausage cheddar balls at, really? at your Christmas Eve parties. Yes. But they're always made with Bisquick and like stuff I I've can't eat. I have never had them before. You need to get better friends. I well, I need to get friends. What are you talking about? You need to get some friends and get invited <laughs> to these parties. Yeah, I never, I, I never heard of them before. I thought it was some West Coast thing that you uh, no. came across. I didn't realize it was from here back east. Back east. That's interesting. Back east. So, so you're working on you're still working on your spices. Yeah. You're not working on dressings. Yeah. Here, and I'll show you. yeah. The spices are going to look like this. I'm, I'm going so to start excited. singing now as she comes back into the shot. Oh, there she is. <laughs> so you'll get a little box. Okay. This is a little, little. On, there we go. So you'll get a little box. And then we got the little, we got the dill. We got the barbecue dust. We got the taco. This is going to be the three pack. Or you can order them what, uh, in two packs of what of the individual flavors. And then you open it. And this only has one. But then you go, oh my God, look. Oh my, I'm so excited. I can make ranch dressing. Look at that. And it has a so little canister. Do you have, are they pre, are they, are the kits? It'll look like the, that. The boxes pre-done? Or can you actually pick what you're buying if you're buying uh, the, the two? The, Three pack will be pre done, and then the, the two pack you can pick what you want to buy. So, okay. if you just want taco seasoning, yeah, no problem. You can order okay. 10 two packs of taco seasoning. Of taco seasoning, yeah. But so, if you want to try the little sampler because you're like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna like. So, let me ask that. you about this because I'm very familiar yeah. with tacos. Um, yes, so amen. We love canister, tacos. Each canister, how many, each, how many pounds of each meat? Each canister will it... is four servings. Uh, it's, it's about eight tablespoons. You do two tablespoons, okay. um, which is about two tablespoons for a pound to a pound and a half of meat. Okay. okay. Yeah. And what is the price point going to be on that? Or we don't know yet. I, probably 10.99. For the three? But, I, for but I honestly, for one. Okay. I, I wish it was for the three. <laughs> Wishful <Still>. thinking. <laughs> you don't need to retire, do you? You know how much these are? Yeah, I know how much those are. In LA, the in the grocery stores in LA, these are selling for sixteen dollars a jar, which amazes me, and I think it's fantastic. By the way, I don't do get that profit. I don't. Of get course that not. You know that, right? Yes, I know that. <laughs> okay, but in order, they, that's what they mark. It's insane. So, how many stores? But it's a are really nice right product. Oh. Somewhere between 30 and 35. We just onboarded into three more stores in the Inland Empire here in, in, in LA. We're, we have distribution in SoCal and Arizona, but that just means that we call all the stores that they sell into and say, hey, can you take our sauce? Hey, will you take our sauce? And yeah. then most of them don't return our calls or emails. And then every now and then somebody will write back and say, yeah, that'd be perfect for our store. And then we go, yay. So how and much is each there. sauce selling on the website for? $13.49 a jar. $13.49. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a three dollar markup. No, 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 no. Uh, that's not what I. No, not you. I, I'm talking the grocery store. Oh, over what I'm selling at retail? Yeah. Yes. So, in other words, you got to explain to people it's better to buy it on the website. Yeah. And then that way you'll get a little if bit you, more directly to you, I guess. Maybe I don't. Know. Yeah. Well, also too, if you don't live in California, Colorado, or Arizona, you're going to have to, and you really want the sauce, which I hope that you do because it's delicious. But again, we're at the beginning of starting a food company. And I'm just right. like, when you watch Shark Tank and people are like, we need $4 million for I've been, 3% of our company. Now I know why they say that. Because I've been waiting so for hard. you to be on Shark Tank. I really have. <laughs> My publicist says he wants to try to get me on Shark Tank. I was like, I don't know if I have the sack for that. <laughs> oh, come on. You can do it. <laughs> when we get bigger, when we've launched more stuff, when we have nationwide distribution, when, when we will. Because well, I would that definitely way, consider it. 
because not only will it publicize the sauce, it will also public publicize your career. And right. you're going to show a, clips of you doing your stuff and your stand up and so on and so forth. Right. And just think it's a win win for you. It is. It, Shark Tank's actually a great platform. I've watched every single Shark Tank that there's ever been. And I used to watch it when it was on the BBC called Dragon's Den. Yes. So I, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. And but but now having started launched a food brand, I'm like, oh, that's why they ask for an insane amount of money just right. to get the physical products into the grocery stores is great. And everybody has a markup along the way. And so, which is probably why Amazon will decimate everybody because they'll figure out how to do it because they're already working on it. How to, they've already bought Whole Foods. They've already doing yes. Amazon Fresh, all that. So they'll, they'll figure out how to like- So are you selling on Amazon right now? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, so, okay. So just, my question just is- Just direct so if, on the website. Yeah. So if you're, if you would end up selling it in Pittsburgh, one of the- um, right. We have Whole Foods here. We also have, uh, right. uh, what is it, Trader Joe's, and we have the mm -hmm. market district that's through the big uh, grocery store chain that's here. How does it get distributed? Does it come from, where's your manufacturing plan at? We manufacture in Tennessee. Okay, but so we it would to... actually be closer for us to get it yeah. than it would be getting to you. That doesn't when... make any sense. That's right. And when you get nationwide distribution, you probably would get three or four more locations that would make it so that, that it's faster shipping. Tennessee is not bad for Pittsburgh, actually. No, but it's, it's not. That, it's, quick. It's, it's cost a fortune for me to t make, you know, four pallets of sauce and have it shipped to California that then right. it gets unloaded here and it has to go in the trucks to go there or it has to go. There. You know what I mean? It's I, I'm learning. I'm sure there's people out there listening to who are like, yeah, bitch, that's what the business is. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just learning. Because here's the thing, I've been in entertainment for my whole life, and then I decided to write cookbooks and publish them on my own. So I learned about publishing, and it was like one of those things where I was like, that's how you guys do it? Okay. And yeah. then you do it, you know what I mean? And then I found out about grocery. I'm like, grocery, really? That's how it's done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you do it the same way you've been doing it for 50 years? All right. Now, okay, so I wonder if wonder if one of the big companies would come say, Anna, we want to buy the product. Mm -hmm. We want to put your labels on it. We're going to give you this money to buy you out. Would mm -hmm. you do it? Uh, if they kept the integrity of what I was doing. How much money would they have to give you for you to say, hey, take it. I don't care. Or was is oh, the integrity no, 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 more important? No yeah, yeah, okay. there's no price. Yeah, there's okay. no price. Because there's no point to it. I'm like, you can already buy stuff that has no integrity. Okay, well, that's what I'm asking. I'm trying because... to change something. I want to, if, if in my own little way, I can somehow change my little corner of the supply chain so that everybody benefits. Like, for example, that spice packaging I showed you is uh, post-recycled consumer packaging. Mm -hmm. Most spices you see on the shelf are glass or plastic. Glass is right. better. Plastic, not great. And so I'm like, well, if I'm going to start a company, why don't I start from a place of being a solution, a sustainable solution. And it may completely fail. I may completely fall on my ass, but I have to at least try it that way because or else I'm just like another thing in a sea of spices or a sea of sauces. There's a wall of sauce. You walk into the, the world doesn't oh, need I know. another tomato sauce. You saw, know. you're in Walmart. It's like, blah, a wall of sauces. Who cares? Who cares? Because like I said, try to make I... people care. When I walked into Walmart that day, because I know I can't get yours unless I order it from the website, yeah. I decided, let me go see what's there. And again, I see this stuff. It says organic. And I start reading it. And that's when I started sending to you the price points and everything else. And of course, they're distributing it to a larger group. So, of course, their price point right. can be lower. Well, but and when it, they make larger quantities, right. they can lower the, the per jar cost. So that's another so, direction we're going to go in. So have Scaling, you yeah. had anybody of importance try the sauce, love the sauce, mm -hmm. and tell the world that they love the sauce? Um, I think so. Because <laughs> I think uh, uh, other than you and other than Vinny, if you would have an endorsement from somebody. Yeah, an endorsement would be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're working on it. Okay. Because that's what that's what I was just wondering if if you had somebody because that it's amazing how people that have no connection to the food industry can say they like something and then all of a sudden everybody buys. it. Oh, listen, if a Kardashian somehow walks into Lassen's, which is one of the, the chain 
out here, it's very possible that they would walk into farm shop or Lassen's and see the sauce and try it and make their pasta or whatever with it and be like, eh, sounds good. And then okay. it would be a game changer. Yes, that would be okay. wonderful. Uh, have you been sending <laughs> it to anybody? Do. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, okay. we That's send it what to I was curious. Losers. Yes. Okay. We do. Yeah. And some people love it and some people have it written back and some people are like, let's do something. And then I haven't heard back from them, but yes, that's, it's all, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's unfolding. How, it's amazing how this is, how the way marketing of a product has changed so much just in the last 10 years, because well, I would have never right. thought of this. And I did sales for a, for, for a good bit of time. And I never mm. think, I don't think I would have thought that you could just put something on a website or on a Facebook or whatever it may be. And then all of a sudden people are buying it or people right. are not buying it, so on and so forth. I mean, it's amazing to me how this is all working out. It, it is interesting. And I think too, with the, with the influencer economy or how, whatever you want to call right. it, you do, brands do want to know that like, if they post a thing, people are actually going to buy it. You know, because sometimes it has to be something that people care about. Maybe people don't give a shit about sauce. Right. Maybe. And so well, it has to be the right person to, do, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, no, or, I understand. or the market speaks sometimes. And, and again, if it doesn't work and it just kind of all blows up and it, it, then at least I tried, I guess I'm, yeah. I am working on a third book. So there is always that. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I'll, I'll keep doing I, cookbooks. I, 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 and I've been meaning to ask you about this too, because I've been noticing um, commercials on um, cable channels and I don't have cable. I have, uh, we went antenna years ago because I don't like paying a cable bill, but on the sub channels that we're watching like ION and MeTV and stuff like that, right. there's now a keto friendly cereal that- The Magic Spoon? the magic spoon yeah and I they, they have had the crazy crazy success like they're and killing the thing it i think is interesting with me about it is i'm watching it and i go okay i want to go try this mm -hmm. and then i look at what it costs and i'm going i can't afford that the average person cannot right. make the investment in a box of cereal right and that's and again that goes back to what Vinny and i talked about a year ago which is hard to believe it's been a year that the reason we have the problem of weight problem in the United States is because certain things are so expensive That's that right. the people that that it goes that back a can't long afford way. it, it keeps right. perpetuating it. And it that's why fast food way, is cheaper and everything else. Public policy and all that stuff from year, decades and yeah. decades ago where the sugar and grain lobby slash industry were, were subsidized and vegetables and meat were not. Yeah. And still aren't. Yeah. And, and again, it, it just goes back. It's just amazing that something that is good for me or is better for me is it prices me out of the market because I can't afford to buy it compared to right. junk. Well, if I'm channeling Vinny, which I often am. Yes, I know. He would say to stay away from all cereal anyway. Oh, I know. I trust me. You I know, know him. I know. I know Vinny. But, Vinny, but Vinny I hear is, what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Vinny, uh, the one you thing that I was... treat and you want to keep it in the thing and then you yeah. like I can't afford that treat and it's annoying right well the one thing the one thing that Vinny did and I mean and I hate to say this I've been on a, a, a weight roller coaster for the last three months because of work and stress and everything else which is not an excuse but it happened but it's and I'm like, back on again yeah. the one thing the one thing that Vinny did do and I he convinced me to do is I don't drink any soda uh, any of that pop that's anymore. great and that's I, I awesome. do that it's either coffee, water, or bourbon. It's one of the three because or again, Perrier. Thank you, Perrier, <laughs> for being a sponsor of this show. My coffee is from this morning. Um, it's not good once it loses the bubbles. I'm gonna put that oh, away because it tastes like water. It's like, do you drink? Do you drink plain water? Yeah, I do. Do you like the taste of it? I do. I do. See, I'm a southern I, girl. I fill the cup up with ice, so much ice, I just pack the ice in ice cold water yeah see i do the same thing and they look at me around here like i'm crazy because no, my I, got wife doesn't, I love the ice my wife doesn't like ice which i think is interesting um is, and she, it's, it, is she from a european country no she's from right down the road from where we live <laughs> wow i would check her passport oh so. 
<laughs> her family. We've had, oh, she, we've had a lot of America talk today, but in America, America talk, yeah, yeah, we have ice in our drinks. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and we have good ice. We have pure good ice. ice. Well, we we find the best ice. Oh my God, there's people who can't even like find drinking water. We're like that ice. The ice tasted weird. Like the ice had yeah. a taste. <laughs> I'm gonna well, check I, on I think thing. it's funny when people, I was going to ask you if you should check on that because I thought I saw smoke coming up from the oven door. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have forgotten. Oh, this is perfect. Oh my God, I love it. That's done. the way my that's the way my grandmother used to cook. Anytime the smoke alarm went off, she knew it was done. Yes, yeah, done. I, I will say oftentimes your nose knows. Like yeah. right when it's perfect is when you really start to smell it. You're like, oh, take it out now before it burns. So the one thing I've been noticing and having a difficult time with Ta-da! because, oh, it's beautiful. It's really hot um, though. I can't really do the whole taste thing until right, it cools course. down. Because Not to be like, having dairy this month, but this gives me a, a good excuse to eat dairy. So what, you, you alter months that you can have dairy or? No, my doctor has been saying get off of dairy for like seven years. <laughs> That's hard. And so for a while I was, and then I went back on it. And then, I, I mean, so many of my recipes, my audience eats dairy. So so many of my recipes have yeah. dairy and dairy is such a great thing. If you've given up carbs, you're like, no, not dairy yeah. too. That's and, tough. Um, it is tough. And so I, I say this month because I said I was going to be doing a hashtag no dairy February. Um, yeah. But really it's been, what is, we're 23 days into the month and maybe seven to eight days <laughs> let's be honest i won't tell anybody um she, but she yelled at me my doctor yelled at me so the one thing the one thing i'm having issues with is when we, mm-hmm. like we eat a lot of chicken a lot of steak yeah until we can't afford it anymore right is side dishes and i mean mm. i've eaten broccoli until it, it until i turn green sometimes right but and, and, and I, I hate to say this and i told you this too i'm not a big salad eater So that's probably part of the problem. But what else can you eat? Because everything that you buy. That's why I have cookbooks. Well, I know that. Crack a book, sir. You mean have to read? Yes. But it's very few words. Is there not a video or something I can watch? Yes, I have videos too. You just need to, 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 oh, Bill. I can't find a plate. I'm just too flustered with this vegetables comment. I'm a 55 year old. I'm a 55 year old male. That's lazy. What more do you want (laughs) (laughs) from Western Pennsylvania? I I know I married one. Yeah. I married one. I know how you know that. Although he, what are you trying to do right now? I'm trying to move this thing over so I can make room for my plate. I, I love the gloves. I think that just adds so much to the. Uh, They're filthy. They're yeah. just filthy. Have you ever seen a, a, a pair of clean pot holders before? No, but I feel like if I'm on camera, I should probably like have a pair of like camera gloves. You know what I mean? Like, but it, just have it, an extra you, pair that's not filthy, disgusting. But the thing <laughs> is, that's what it looks like. That is what it looks like. Oh my God. It looks amazing. It really does. It's so just, good, Bill. Of course, you just burned the inside of your mouth off, but no, I, I had I cut that piece out earlier. I'm good. So, when you what are you tasting right it. now? Is is the marinara? Chicken. I mean, are you getting the cheeses? Are you getting the coating on the chicken, or is the marinara just no? I got the coating on the chicken, wonderful, wonderfully, and okay. now I'm going back in and I'm dipping this bite of chicken in the marinara. Okay. I haven't gotten a cheesy piece yet. I would honestly, if I had more cheese, I was running out. I would put more cheese on there. Okay. Now the other thing is, I was watching you bread that, and one meal that I loved as a kid that my father would make was chicken cordon bleu, mm. and you were beating on it. And I was thinking about that. That'd be perfect. You could basically do the same thing, other than with the marinara, and then roll them and get put some, the ham, get some the cheese. Ham. Yeah, get some bo- get the boar's head ham that doesn't have the sugar in it. Right, and and hammer out that chicken. Br- br- I would brush it with some mayo and Dijon just to get the season it well and brush it, and then um, put the ham in there and then roll it all up. In fact, in my first cookbook that I didn't send you, <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be autographed or was that one was the one that was autographed, wasn't it? I'll maybe. Yeah. No, you got, the, you got the picture autograph. Stop asking. 
I'll send you the first book. In that one is something called Flamenquines, which is basically a pork chop, okay. hammered out thin, prosciutto, roll it up, okay. roll it in the almond flour, like you're talking about with the chicken cordon bleu, right. fry it in the pan, and then you dip it in mayo. It's so good. But the thing is, I don't like mayo. No. Oh, well, that's okay. You can dip it in something else. I, but I don't, and I don't understand why. I like vinegar. I like eggs. I don't like the combination together. Cheesy. Which is, oh, that's, you know, that's good. You know, that's good. Yeah. Now, this is the dinner for you and your husband, but you're eating it all yeah. yourself right now. Uh huh. Okay. I just thought I'd ask. Is she here? Ben for yourself. <laughs> well, what time is it out there? It is. I haven't had lunch yet. So it's 2 30. It's 2 30. So you're actually mm -hmm. eating a late lunch then. Mm -hmm. So, with all you the meals that you, you make, you need to carry this show because I'm going to eat this chicken parm right now. What's that? I say you need to carry this show because I'm going to eat okay. this chicken parm right now. <laughs> That's fine. So you can just <laughs> nod then when I ask you the questions. Okay. So when you when you do mm. these meals, mm -hmm. um, are you always tempted to eat them afterwards, or do you just eat them to make sure they're good, and then you just go all the way in and decide you're going to? What do you mean? Just like when I'm eat. cooking on camera? Yeah. Do you eat everything you make? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't make stuff that's not going to be good. Okay. I, I will tell you this much. From writing my first cookbook to writing my second cookbook, I did learn a lot about maybe certain things I could have edited better or put certain things together. So did, I, I was trying to separate components and make things really simple, which I right. think has been to my advantage. I think it's helped a lot of people who have not been in the kitchen before, and that's mm -hmm. good. Um, but I, I don't, I will not publish a dud. Like I will, okay. I don't put filler recipes. I don't put bullshit in. I don't believe in bullshit. I won't put a free recipe out there. That's a dud. Like I just don't do it. And here's why it's because I always love to cook. And there were certain things I would get a hold of certain recipes. And I would think, I didn't know what I was doing because it would mm -hmm. somehow get messed up or maybe I screwed up the recipe or I didn't follow it correctly. Turns out, and if you listen to my interview on my Substack with Trisha Clark, who is a food show producer, right? Um, she's produced Top Chef, Master Chef, all these shows and it's a great interview. And she, I got her to reveal as much as I could get her to reveal because there's a lot of insider secrets and she doesn't want to lose her jobs. So, but the idea being that's a very known thing in the food industry. Don't worry. They'll, they'll think they made a mistake. Oh, really? And, and I don't like that attitude. Oh, I got, I mean, that makes sense. It's a very known thing. And yeah. in fact, one person in particular that I was thinking of, uh, she said, she's like, oh, she's the worst at it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> damn it. And so it's like, I don't put duds out there. I test things. And early on, when I first wanted to do this, Vinny and I were podcasting. And I met with a book agent who basically said to me, you don't have anything to offer. You either need to partner with a celebrity chef or something because no one's going to buy your stuff because nobody knows who you are and you right. have nothing to offer. And that hit me, obviously, like that hurt my feelings, first of all, right. people say, but I always, I'm from, again, I'm from the entertainment world, which is people hurt your feelings right and left. You have to use it as fuel to go mm -hmm. out and get, go after what you want. Because if you just broke down every time, it, yeah, it would be, be over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you wouldn't you'd do be anything. hiding under your bed. Yeah. It's, it's eviscerating. So when she said that, I thought to myself, well, I see what she's saying about partnering with a celebrity chef, but that doesn't make any sense because a celebrity chef has their own recipes and then they pay a ghostwriter to put them all together because they're busy. Right. And right. like, they, I, I would, and I don't want to be a ghostwriter. I want to be the face. Sorry. Cut. Right. Bleep it out. <laughs> I want to be the face. Right. And so I realized I have to be really, really specific and precise and correct with what I'm putting out there. So I have tested my recipes. Okay. I've got I've gotten faster at it, but my first book took me four years to write. My second book took me three years to write. My third book, I'm actually almost done with it. And it's two years later, but I am not, it, it wouldn't come out for another year anyway. But right. so you see what I'm saying? Like the, the quality control for me is really important because I am a nobody coming out of nowhere going, Hey, I have good stuff. So it's not like are, I'm you, like, are you, know. you still taking your own photos? Mm -hmm. And tell me why this, this recipe is not photo worthy. What chicken parm? Yeah. 
Because you um, mentioned that in the beginning of the program. I'll tell, you. I'll tell you why this is hard to photograph. First of all, for this one, I would do an overhead. I would do an okay. overhead of this and put the right. little spatula in it. And then right. uh, you would have to take olive oil because already you can't really see it, but already the cheese on top has gotten dry. Right. So I would I would take olive oil and the pastry brush and I would brush it so it glistens because you want that glistening wet cheese. Um, this is better because it, the cheese looks a little more off white, a little more yellowish. But oftentimes when you melt mozzarella on something, it's so bright white that it blasts out. You can't see, you don't see the detail. When you cut fresh mozzarella, you know how you see those little lines? Oh yeah. You can't see that when it's in a, in a photograph, even with like, because the, the, the white balance of it br blasts out. So if you look on my site, I have a picture, I have a couple pictures of this recipe and I've taken it several times over the years, just keep getting better at it. You know what I mean? As I learn more tricks of the because trade. Because what, what frustrates me when I look at cookbooks is mm -hmm. that I'm still eating. I'm still eating. <laughs> it's okay. As you can tell, the photos are staged. And yeah. like you're saying, that you can do it. And anytime I make anything, I can follow the recipe to the T and it tastes wonderful, but it does not look like right. it does in the cookbook. And I think that's frustrating that you're allowed to show what it really looks like without making it look better. Because I think you're giving us, uh, oh, that looks amazing right there, which is the. Uh, the white balsamic chicken thighs. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. But that's very simple. I also, most of my photos are just of I, the food. I don't do big tablescapes. I don't do food styling. And okay. in fact, Trisha, Trisha, who I was talking about, who I interviewed for my sub stack, in that book that you're looking at, there's a Trisha's sea bass with agri-dolce sauce. So Trisha's mm -hmm. a food stylist. That's where she came from. So we, when she was building her book years ago, we would put stuff together and I would take pictures of it. And so she teaches me a few tricks, but I'm not going to do the thing where, for example, the, the roast turkey that's on my website. Yes. I've got to take that real quick coming out of the oven while it looks perfect because what happens is it oh, yeah, gets it's, dry it's, and it goes yeah. and it like constricts and it looks like a yeah. weird. <laughs> so what they do, so Tr Trisha's like, well, what we do when she does a butterball shoot and she works for butterball and shoots their commercial or their yeah. print ad or whatever, is she, it's a raw turkey that they put a certain chemical yes. compound over Which, and do the thing. It's, but that's what she has to do because the product, they have to do that with the product. I mean, they have to use the actual product. It I, is a butterball I, I, turkey. And I, like I, made a fake turkey. I, under, but, I understand that. But, but I, I agree with you. I want it, I want it to look like if it's on its right. best day. You know? Now I'm looking at this one and I, and I think it's interesting that you want the skin on when you do the chicken. Yeah. For that recipe. Well, yeah. Okay. Not this one. I don't do this the skin one, on no. for, no, no. This is so, so good. Cause, cause actually that one, I think I'm going to make tomorrow night because I just flipped to it and it looks amazing. Um, I'm dripping down my face. <laughs> I need a so, spoon, a spoon to like scoop out the sauce. Oh my God. Okay. It's so, so okay. Good. the other question I'm is stop. because of, uh, with the sauce that you've made mm -hmm. um, and the Parmesan, could right. you throw some onions, some peppers yeah, absolutely. and stuff in that? And I, okay. Cause I'll, cause that's for some reason that just popped into my head. I oftentimes here's, here's my easy weeknight meal. I just made it the other night. I have leftovers in the fridge, uh, chop up an onion, saute it in the mm -hmm. olive oil. Um, if you have other vegetables you want to put in, put them in, take a pound of ground beef, throw it in there and then season the crap out of it with salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, pour a jar of this on there. Mm -hmm. It's basically like a poor man's chili and yeah, it's really easy to just eat that. And then if you have a vegetable you want to throw in there, if you want to chop up yeah. asparagus or broccoli or Brussels or whatever, if you do, you'll probably have to cover it and let it simmer to get the vegetables cooked, but it's a, or a bag of cauliflower rice in there. Right. I do it all the time. It's so yeah. it, you have dinner done in 10 minutes. My wife makes something similar to that. Of course, yeah. not using your sauce, but um, she uses uh, crushed window. tomatoes instead. Yeah. You just so. have to, if, and if you use crushed tomatoes, you just got to make sure you put more seasoning in there, but you can, right, exactly. As long as the meat's cooked, you just taste as you go along and you can oh, yeah. adjust to your flavor palette. Yeah. The only thing is, is that her flavor palette, she likes more salt and I like less salt. So it's, that's going to be an issue. And with the blood pressure issue that I have, she's worried about that. So it's like, she seasons it to a point where she thinks I'm going to like it. And then she seasons it, then she adds what she needs after she serves it. So anyway, 
Anna, that looks amazing. I wish I could come to your house to, for dinner. I, I wish you could too, because you would really enjoy this. And it looks amazing. Low carb and really gluten does. free, and you know, I, that's and you would not know it. Right I, there. I would put this up against a restaurant chicken parm any day of the week. It's so but the good. Thing, but the thing it gets me is, and this is what I don't understand. What you made is so easy to make that why right? don't the restaurants do it? Is it because of cost? Because I can't imagine being because of Probably. convenience. Probably. This bag of almond flour is like $15. Yes, it could be cost. Okay. okay. Gluten-free flour will be less expensive, but still more expensive than regular flour. Yes, okay. cost is always, especially with restaurants, because their margins are so thin. That's, yeah. just, that's just ridiculous. But you can that's make why it at it's home. just better to eat at you home. Can make it at home. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anna, thank you very much. I really appreciate thank you, you for having time. me. I will send you a book <laughs> and I might even sign it, but I might not. You're going to have to wait. And I'm going to have to find out. Anna, I like this. We need to do more cooking segments. I know. This is uh, fun. In the thank future. you for having me and letting me promote Eat Happy Kitchen Sauce. And, and the website where they can get this? EatHappyKitchen.com. Thank you for asking. HappyKitchen.com. Cookbooks yeah. are there too? Yep. Yeah. Everything. All the things. When are the spices going to get kick off again? I'm actually, I'm waiting for an email to come through for my production date. And when it does, I will be selling it. I'll email you. Bill, buy my sauce. Stop. I mean, spice. <laughs> buy my spice. You better buy I it. will if I can be the spokesperson for the taco seasoning. Okay, perfect. That's great. Because I want to get, I want to start a career in voiceover and I don't know how to do that. Okay, so. well then you're going to have to start uh, at the bottom rung, which is the spokesperson for my taco seasoning. That works for me. Okay. And I don't even do it for free. I mean, I don't, I'm not proud. Well, you know, you're going to have to do it for free. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have no money. That's the budget. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the budget. Well, Anna, thank you very much. I had a wonderful you, time Bill. as always. It's so great as to always. talk to you again. Appreciate um, it. Thank again, you. thank you very much. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, thank you very much to Anna Vicino for joining me today. Had a great time talking to her and kind of fun to do a cooking program again. The first time I've done one in quite a few years. Uh, remember, you can check everything out at her website. The link will be put right here. And also, don't forget about her cookbook. Uh, the first one is Eating Happy. The second one is Eating Happy too. So everybody, you have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you next time here on The Bill Alexander Show. Thank you for listening to The Bill Alexander Show. The Bill Alexander Show is a million-dollar baby production. For more information, go to thebillalexandershow.com.